Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about building your own tools. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, do programmers often build tools to improve their efficiency? How do they do it? Yes, how do they do it? This is probably the topic in that is closest and nearest and dearest to my heart uh, and has been since forever ever it is so hard to do this and I always get so excited when I find a product worth looking into to that actually does this thing so I like to say and this is this is the thing I realized after a while of working that once you know how to code, you feel a lot of empowerment and it feels cool, you can do things and you feel like, oh, everything was really hard in the beginning and now you kind of know how to do stuff. And then you start realizing that, yeah, I have these skills that I can use to build all of these awesome things, but I don't have anything worth my time to build. That is something that I came to realize very quickly that I can build pretty much anything I want, but there's really no reason for me to do that because either there's someone who already built it and their thing is much nicer than my thing and I, it's easier for me to just use that thing than to build my own thing. Uh, it's really hard. It, uh, it, honest to God, I feel this all the time. It's really hard to find a good project, to find something where you go, yeah, this is worth the time this is the worth the investment but when you find it it is the best thing ever it is so engaging it's so fun honestly I would go so, as far as to say that this is actually really dangerous because I don't think that there's anything that gets over engineered as quickly as an internal tool or something where people get really excited about this about the problem because when you get too excited about, well, not the problem, but the solution, when you get into the wrong headspace, you actually build something that is much more complicated. And I had many a useless tools on my GitHub or like things that I've just, yeah, this was, I built it and then it never got used, at least not by me. I think that I, st I only have two published, uh, uh, published packages or something like that, which actually had a few downloads. I was very surprised, which I made. Like these are like random things that I made for my first at my one of my first jobs because we had some problems with uh, with figuring out some legacy issues with our SAS or CSS files, and so I built a little tool that was going to help us do that thing. It was m enormously over. In, well, it's not, I wouldn't say over-engineered, but if I look at how many times I used the thing versus the time I put into it, the cost-benefit ratio was fucking off. Holy shit, I really do hope that it's actually working because I never care, I've never even looked back on it now. I hope that somebody has found it useful, but I've ne it's never been useful. But I spent, like, it was great fun to build it, I loved it, uh, but it wasn't really useful. So... What I but I, I really believe that you should invest in this because uh, I'll give you a, a, a story from my own work right now, which is actually I think that this is the first time. I it's still a little bit early. I can still see this going the wrong way, but so far it's actually already started producing value and like very significant value. I'm actually very. I feel I, I'm gonna go and say it. I feel a little bit proud. I'm very happy with how it turned out. It's not just my project. It's something that I did with is a case collaboration with one of my coworkers and I think that he would agree that it's actually looking pretty promising so we had a uh, we had a uh, we uh, where we have what I like to call a standard like a boilerplate story uh, which is a story where whenever like it's something that comes back like every quarter or some interval you need to make a new implementation a favorite uh, an example would be you are going to sell a new type of product or you're gonna place a new type of order type of thing right whenever you do that there's always one thing that is required from you and that is to go through what a, a boilerplate process okay so you have all these interfaces and all these methods and all this code where okay you need to create some type of serialization step so like you you have an incoming model with data that is coming from the form that someone is posting with the order information and then you need to write tests for that thing and then you need to convert that thing like you need to extract the data put into pipe it through a bunch of logic uh, and then probably create some type of persistent model which is the thing like you save the order itself 
and depending on your the way that you structure your orders and like the data model uh, you might have one model per type of order or you might have a very generic thing uh, depending in my case we went with a more like specific thing where we have different models depending on what type of order we're dealing with which adds a lot of like it adds boilerplate there are benefits as well but it becomes more boilerplate because you need to add more models and then you create some type of view model and, like there's a lot of other logic for internal systems and so forth that is like it's literally the same thing every single time like you, you, it's you could copy paste the requirements it's just that you create a new model and you go through the same thing over and over and over again right so i told my coworker let's standardize this thing let's uh, let's uh, because the, it's take like just because the problem is that uh, this is something that you can't really well, you need you could test this you could in theory create a if you have you if you we were using BDD which I hope that we will at some point uh, we could have created a suite of tests that just checks just like this feature work as intended but the problem is usually that you don't actually remember all of these boilerplate steps that you need to add code in different places and so forth so what we did was to create a little CLI a, uh, a command line interface which takes like where you basically just declare the model that you want to save to your database or the thing that you're going to like the order model that you're creating right and then what it will do is that it will actually spit out like it will render out just as you render an HTML page instead of rendering HTML it actually renders in this case Scala code it actually renders out all the code that you're gonna have to add to the project where with instructions of where to like put all of these uh, all this code so that you can just get yeah here's a to-do list just copy paste that code copy paste that code copy paste that code blah 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 right into the like the Scala code base this is just an external thing and it it reduced the like the time like from say that we took a day or two or three or something like that let's say call uh, be lofty let's say it takes four days for a beginner or like a junior developer to actually implement this thing and for my coworker who's done it a million times that he can do it from memory so it might go faster for him now it like takes a few minutes because you don't even you don't even have to write the code because it's already it's it's the same damn thing every single time it just needs to be done and this is an example of uh, the sort of solutions that i really enjoy and I think that uh, it, it is something that I'm always trying to be on the lookout for because these are, it's very much in line with the Google philosophy, the automate all the things. I don't think that you can completely automate everything, but I do believe that if you can identify things where you're doing something that is very ineffective and you can find something that actually makes you more effective without, of course, over investing in the thing because as I said you can go the other way you could create a really advanced tool that does something really super super fancy that actually costs you more time in maintenance than it's going and then the thing that you're doing is going to cost you you don't get into that space like really avoid that don't create a tool that is so damn like, because I remember when we were first talking about that tool it was like we, we were talking about maybe we should do an AST parser type of thing that parses and like does rewrites and all that stuff and I kind of went no 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 let's just use strings let's just template out the thing because we don't need a system like a tool that knows how to rewrite an AST and then spit out new Scala code there is no value in it we just need something to just take away all that typing for us and give us a reminder list of where we need to put all this stuff so that we don't forget about it so what I want you to take away from this is that Yes, programmers build their own in tool, internal tools. Uh, the danger with doing that is usually, in my experience at the very least, that sometimes you create a tool that is way too complicated. It wasn't all that long ago uh, where I dealt with that, uh, where we had this bunch, uh, usually it's like a bunch of ad hoc scripts that does something fancy. And when somebody takes it too far, they create like a solution to a problem you don't even have like the script can do like a hundred things and you really only ever use one or two of those things and then it rots really quickly because people kind of get bored with it so it's really it is really hard to figure out like a really good internal tool or something that's really going to work for you but when you do it's really rewarding and it can be make you a lot lot more productive so if you want to do the same sort of thing i think that you should take a look a little bit on at yourself and your own work process are there things that you continue to do that is kind of boilerplate or things that are really hard or really ineffective. I mean, I've done many things such as, well, 
we have these manual things like if something goes wrong with the system we might have to place an order manually or like reach out to people and stuff like that and some of that stuff is like going and doing kind of weird hacky things to just get some JSON or, insult or something like that. In many cases you can just create a little CLI or like a script that does a lot of that work for you or helps you with part of that process to speed it up just a little bit so it is less painful for you. And that is really really rewarding when you can make your own tools. It's really hard as I said to find good, uh, good use cases but when you do it's the best thing ever. Have a great day!